welcome back. This is our final episode of this Arab Amp Folktales uh, season. This is our July offering with our artist feature, Jennifer Jaja, an incredible comedian. I'm excited to dive into some of her material. We also are joined by the incredible Yasmina Ode of Al Jadur of the Arab Shittat, a Debka troupe out of the Bay Area, um, who is picking up the question of cultural production a little bit differently than uh, we normally see. I'm really excited to dive into that interview with her. We hope you enjoy this offering. It's been so much fun to have this season with y'all um, out of Oakland, unseated, occupied, um, Huchin, Ohlone territory. So we'll see you in the production. We are joined today for a community spotlight with the incredible Yasmin Ode of Al Jazur. Uh, Dabka Group, Al Jazur of the Arab Shattat. Thank you so much for joining us. Yeah, thanks for inviting me on. Um, we're really excited, um, especially just to talk about Al Jazur, the group, kind of um, the perspective behind it, how it was founded, and why um, Dabka is such a critical part of um, cultural resistance. Um, maybe even a uh, contribution to some of the work uh, for Palestinian liberation return in the diaspora and being able to really um, speak to you today about some of the frameworks, you know, why Debka, how do you teach Debka, um, you know, why, why is it so important? Um, so the first thing, just to start small, you know, what is Al Jadur and um, what's your role in Al Jadur? And a little, tell us a little bit about yourself. Yeah, so Al Jadur is a Debke group based in the Bay Area. It was founded in 2004 by two individuals called um, Maryam Moghrebi and Zina Zatari. Um, they came together, they, um, they wanted a hub for like culture and Palestinian, um, where like Palestinian community can come together. So that's how, that was the premise of how it started. Um, we were, at first they would rehearse in the Bay Area, I mean, sorry, in San Francisco, and now we're more based in the East Bay. Um, I joined Jadud in 2015. My uncle is currently also the creative director of Jadud, so I joined because my grandma was like, go check it out, try, try to play with your uncle. <laughs> and I was like, oh, okay. Um, but I went and I felt very like embraced into community and very supported. Um, Previous to that, I'd only done like the very fundamental six step um, or six beat step um, of Depke. So it was very fun to like grow my like skill set and like build community with folks in the Bay Area. It was definitely um, how I started to form like my community in the Bay. Hmm. Yeah. How long have you been in Al Jalur and what's your role in the troupe? Hmm. So I've been, I joined in 2015. At first, I was like everyone, like a student and a dancer. And then as the years progressed, I took on more of a leadership role as a teacher. Um, currently, I'm running the group with my uncle Wael, and we have some other senior members who do a great job of like keeping it going and supporting new folks who come in to join. Um, we like to keep it open, so like anyone who has like roots in like Palestine and the Arab diaspora are welcome to like come, check your route out, see if it's um, something they want to do and try. Um, we don't like turn anyone away for like lack of like skill set or previous experience. We, this is like the purpose of Jadud is to like service our community. So we try to make it as accessible as possible for people. Al Jadud definitely taught me what I know about Debke. Yeah. And you were a big part of that. And I think, um, you know, one of the things I really appreciated being a student with Al Jadud um, and showing up, you know, um, with Al Jadur to engage in community mm -hmm. um, is uh, the way that Al Jadur one uh, is like a community space for the people who join, mm -hmm. and then two is really like a participatory and community hub um, at these different events for the aspects or pieces of our community that um, you know invite invite Al Jadur and invite you all to to either celebrate with them or mm -hmm. um, uplift uh, you know even uh, a demand of the protest, for example. I think the way that Al Jadur does uh, Debke and does your work is a little bit different. I'm wondering if you could speak a little bit to um, kind of the identity or the um, ethos of Al Jadur. Why yeah. do you all do what you do the way that you do it? Yeah. 
So like the name Ajadur itself means like roots in Arabic and we're like of the Arab Shatta, so of the Arab diaspora. Um, and we are very like intentional and selective about where we choose to perform. We often just um, perform at schools, cultural events, like fundraisers, protests. Those are like environments and contexts you'll see us in because we really are there to like um, support our community, like uplift our culture and like show, especially young folks, like they can be proud of their culture and where they're from. I feel like it's um, very easy to come to like the US or outside of the Arab world and like assimilate and kind of let go of that and wanna um, like blend in. And people have done this, you know, for various reasons. Um, but it is important for us to like assert our, assert our existence as like Palestinians and Arabs um, and to like preserve our important cult cultural art. A lot of, um, during the British mandate, a lot of um, like politi political factions and revolutionary groups had Debke troops within their um, organizations because they valued that as, um, Debke is an integral part of our culture. So it's, I feel like we're like, continuing on that legacy in diaspora of like fighting for like the right to return home and liberation, um, which is why we, you know, perform at schools to teach like kids what we do. Um, we do like cultural events because like it's beautiful to see people like light up and feel pride in their culture as opposed to shame when like, especially post like 9-11, a lot of people like had to hide and kind of um, blend in for safety reasons. Mm -hmm. I love that you connect it back to um, like British Mandate and the way that Debke was part of like a cultural resistance or like mm -hmm. a center. Um, to to organize uh, folks who were doing direct political work. Mm -hmm. um, I know that something um, you've talked about before is the way that um, sometimes choreography um, has come out in particular moments in our history. I don't know if you want to speak a little bit more to that with other troops like Al-Fanun. Yeah, so al is one of like the most prominent um, deputy groups from Palestine along with like Wishah and other organizations. Um, but during the first Intifada, a lot of um, like the Zionist entity were locking up a lot of like artists, dancers, like people involved in like um, culture and cultural work. And they, um, so because of that, a lot of Finun's choreography in, during that time came out of like the prisons. So definitely like it's, it's a very, it, the relationship goes both ways, right? The like context influences the dance and our dance like influences the context. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think the other piece, just connecting back to like how you said, you know, Al Jadur is, is um, trying, you know, it's open for people of the community, even if they're not Falastini, right? Yeah. Um, or specifically calling people to be involved um, and learning like an art form this way. It's so connected to um, different practices or history. Um, and it's really powerful. It's a powerful way. Um, to bring people together around something, to do storytelling. Mm -hmm. And just thinking about in Al-Fanun, also like how many of those kids, you know, and the youth who kind of grew up themselves went to prison or are the parents mm -hmm. of martyrs, or sorry, excuse me, are the children of, of um, martyrs or their parents are in prison or et cetera. Mm -hmm. um, and just how, um, how powerful that is to be able to actually perform something that you're... Um, that your parents maybe help put together or that tells a story that's not just your individual story but your collective story of this moment of intifada you know everyone's parents are getting taken away all the houses are getting searched things like that um just uh, so cool i feel like i learned a lot throughout the um through the different storytelling mechanisms you know folk tales kind of taking y'all's lead in um you know y'all um have incredible choreography and kind of run people through it. So I don't know if there are any particular events or things you want to highlight that El Jodor had done recently that you're really proud of mm -hmm. or think like helps kind of reflect the impact that you all have on the community in the Bay Area. Arab Heritage Month is celebrated in April and this was the first year we had so many performance requests for the months of April. We had one to two performances a week um, as opposed to like last year where we had like one or two and like previously schools never really had um, like Arab heritage events or like um, assemblies. So it's been amazing going to schools and like having them uplift that like there is an Arab identity and having like the students, like the schools um, were for the most part in OUSD in the Oakland Unified School District. 
and the like um, the number of like students who identified as Arab like varied greatly from all the schools we performed at but the consistent thing was like you could feel like the joy and excitement of like the students getting to like learn something new and experience um, a new dance style so that's what was super fun this year. There were some honor events, honor roll events, right? Yeah, we performed at the OUSD honor roll. So they were celebrating their students who had graduated high school. We performed at this year's event. We also performed when they had it in 2019, pre-pandemic, and this was the first year they were able to bring it back. So it was nice getting to go to that. It's always lovely, like, seeing, like, both the students' expressions and also, like, their parents so, like, um, happy and elated to see that like their culture is being represented in a way that like brings them pride. Something that we did with the support of like the Temescal Art Center and Lea um, was that pre-pandemic we had a monthly workshop where people could just come in, learn Debke, um, get to know a bit about the history. Um, more recently in this past June we had a weekly um, Debke workshop series so the four Sundays of June we um, had a workshop, and people got to like come, learn about Debke, like practice it, because um, a big barrier to like people embracing and like being able to participate in their culture is like having spaces to learn, right? It, um, it can be intimidating when like you're at a wedding and people are like doing Debke, and it's very, um, or at a community event, people, people are dancing and you're like, oh, like, is this the moment to learn? So giving people a space to like learn and grow and just feel like connected to like their heritage um, it's always beautiful to see like people's like faces like glow up when they see that they can like participate in the line. Um, so Debke is a line dance and I always tell people like there is a spot in the line for everyone. Like mm -hmm. the front people will have people doing the more elaborate things. You can be in the middle, you can be at the end, but we're all dancing together and collectively. And that's I think one of like the beauties and like the strengths of Debke. It's a, it's a communal dance. It is about like our feet like impacting the land and like making vibrations and doing it together. Because, you know, one person doing Depke alone, honestly, not as impressive as like a whole line coming together and like like in synchro um, synchronizing their motions and like their rhythms and their steps. It's very, um, it's beautiful to see and like to come together and to do that. Absolutely. I guess for a last question, Yasmin, is there anything, uh, maybe a message that you want to kind of leave um, for other Arab or Palestinians in the diaspora um, who are um, maybe attracted to cultural arts and maybe the role that that has for them as individual, but also back to our identity as mm -hmm. um, Palestinian or Arab people, back to our role as those in diaspora who must organize and, and work towards the liberation of our homelands and our people, even when we're abroad. That's a big question. I would definitely say, I feel like, for, like the first thing is don't let your fear stop you from like trying and learning. Like we all make mistakes, all we learn and it can be like a clumsy process, but it's a part of it. And then at the end you, um, it it's, can be a very fulfilling one. And with regards to our connection to like our homelands, like I see this work like in diaspora as integral to like supporting our folks back home and like to emphasizing our existence and like the need for us to like return and liberate our homeland. So it's, they're definitely all connected, like all like indigenous people's struggles and like um, oppressed people's struggles, like they cannot be separated from people's like culture and their identity. Like culture is integral to like our understanding of who we are. So it's def like, yeah, it's, it can be overwhelming because it's such a big part of who we are, right? But it's definitely like once you like take your first step and explore, like just dive in, like you'll find people like very happy to like welcome you in and teach you because like we, it's not, um, it's not something to like safeguard or like be protective over, something to like be shared and like um, embraced by all of us. Thank you so much, Yasmin. We'll see you in Oakland getting ready to dance.
is your obligation? What is your responsibility? Are you allowed to move on? If you don't remember, who will? If you don't remain vigilant, who does? Do you need to carry this suffering? Is it your duty? What is your duty to your legacy? If you put it down, this suffering, where does it go? Who are you without it? reconcile this identity of pain and transform it? Is forgetting necessary to move forward? Is forgiving? What if your pain is ongoing? Your dispossession? Your oppression? are suffering. What is your responsibility to the collective? To yourself. Do you owe the oppressed anything? Beyond pity, thoughts, Is it okay to let go? Is the past real? Does it live in our memories? Or is it always here? In the present, omnipresent, is keeping it alive for resistance, or does it keep you from the now where your power lives? Is there enough freedom for all of us? Does your freedom invalidate mine? When does your freedom invalidate mine? When is fighting back hurting you? When is holding on exacerbating your pain? liberation. Can you ever go back? What does forward look like? Can we make a new world? And where does the old one go? allow them to make us, but not to 
Is your story more important than mine? Who belongs here? Who has the right to be here? Are you what you were or what you are now? Who will you be when you are free? Is violence ever the answer? When is violence the answer? Is this the world we all agree to? Where does joy and peace come from if you're constantly fighting and resisting? Do you have rights? Or do you have obligations? Will it be a 